My dear, whom else should I write on this day but you? Only, there was nothing to tell. I keep thinking, what a long time to live. For whom? For what? But there is no answer. One thing, I can still find relief in housework and cooking. Let me hear from you, how you are, Sasha dear. Affectionately, Emma. P.S. Do you want me to send you the Manchester Guardian and the Times Literary Supplement? Let me know. E. He never got her letter. In the middle of the night on June 28, 1936, Goldman received a telephone call from Nice imploring her to come at once. Arriving in Sasha's apartment, Goldman learned that he had shot himself in the chest. He died that night. This great center force of her life is gone. I think it must have been, in her life, the most devastating personal loss she ever had. I don't think that, I know that. Two months after Berkman's death, friends came to see Goldman in Saint-Tropez. They found her distraught, even, they thought, on the verge of a nervous breakdown. One friend saw her walking alone in the garden at Bon Esprit, calling out softly, Sasha, where are you? With the loss of Sasha Berkman, Goldman wrote that the largest part of her life had followed him to his grave. During two decades of exile, she returned to the United States only once, following the publication of her thousand-page autobiography. Throughout her visit, the 64-year-old activist was dogged by the FBI. Even so, she lamented at the end of her stay, she would have returned to America if she'd had the choice. Emma Goldman spent the last few months of her life in Canada. On February 17, 1940, she'd been sitting with two friends, laughing and talking, playing bridge. Suddenly, she collapsed in her chair. She suffers a stroke. An ambulance is called, friends arrive. And one of them, Arne Thorne, remembers her on a stretcher being taken out. And the only gesture she could manage was to pull her skirt down over her knee to be silenced and to lay there unable to speak. And no one else could do that to her. Not a government in the world could do that to her, you know. Not a government in the world could. And she must lay there. I think it's unbearably sad. On May 14th, 1940, Emma Goldman died. Denied entry into the United States for so many years, she was finally permitted in death to cross the border. She was buried in Chicago's Waldheim Cemetery, near the graves of the Haymarket Martyrs. She raised people's consciousness. You know, she uh, transformed people's thinking. She, she made them ask questions. She made them question their own lives and their political assumptions. And she spoke back to power. Emma Goldman is recognizable to me because, because of, of the attitude, the, the chutzpah, the sense of humor, uh, the, the energy, which is always boundless. And also her soulfulness, which is so very Russian. 
the ability to, to, to dive into great emotions, but also to emerge out of them. Uh, there's something comforting about this persona. There's something reliable about, about Emma Goldman. It's hard to imagine how the human heart um, can sustain that level of passion um, and, and um, intense uh, concentration on the possibility of change that becomes, you know, their heartbeat. We're so sort of stuck in the gray middle, and you read her, and she lived her life on fire. That's something utterly thrilling about that. If we look at everything that she did, the fight for free speech, the fight for women to have control over their bodies, the fight, the fight against state intrusion in our life, the fight against totalitarianism, becoming the nettle of our conscience. She didn't do it for wealth. She didn't do it for money. She didn't do it for personal gain. She did it for all of us. And she's awkward and she's ornery and she's a pain. Great. Great.